Hi there, welcome back. What we're looking at here is uh, another puzzle and uh, I'm actually considering changing the name of my channel to Sucker for Punishment because this one really was quite a challenge. If you saw the previous video on the Melos SHA-1, which was in itself quite a, uh, quite a challenge, this one will probably interest you as well. This is the next stage up from that particular preamp. Actually, it was the headphone amplifier. This one is more a preamp and came afterwards in an attempt to implement a different technology, which, um, although quite innovative, proved to be a bit of a problem for the developers. So this is the Melos Gold. It's an SHA Gold, and this one comes with a innovation called a faux tensiometer. Now, what this was was an attempt to use light-dependent resistors instead of a pot to change the volume, and it wasn't the first time, but it certainly was quite innovative at its uh, in its time in that nobody else had really done this before in a commercial preamp that I know of anyway. Now when they developed this one it came after the success of the simplified uh, simple version the SHA-1 which was basically that board at the back there a little bit simpler but um, almost the same as that board you see over there and it's just a stereo headphone amplifier using two tubes and then the output from the headphone was then taken to the back as a line output for um, its preamp function. And in the previous video, I ended up actually developing or drawing the schematic because there was no real schematic out there. I think it's probably the only full schematic that's been published to date. And so when this one came up, I couldn't resist it. Not only because it does have similarities, and some of the similarities aren't very, very nice. There is no schematic out there. Um, there's also quite a love-hate relationship between the users and this particular preamp. The fact is that the use of light-dependent resistors to change the volume proved to be the start of quite a movement, but in itself, it was a source of endless problems for the Mellos crowd. Most of the information on the web actually deals with getting rid of this control board at the front here. In fact, getting rid of that which made this particular preamp unique. So people have got this uh, preamp and removed the front control panel, changed it to a different type of volume control, and then ended up with something that they were pretty happy about. But I wanted to restore this thing to its original format and someone did me a favor. The owner did me a favor. He's had this thing in the hands of dozens of people in the past and the result is that was actually a mess, which seems to be the sort of thing that I like to mess with. I'll be explaining in a bit more detail how this concept works, but when I first got this, someone had rewired a lot of the stuff in here. They believed that the, the LDRs, the optocouplers with light dependent resistors on it, were defective. So they bypassed that entire section and they used this potentiometer as a volume control. This is an Alps motorized pot which works with a remote control function. So instead of using this pot to adjust the amount of current going to the lights that are changing the resistance of those uh, LDRs, they use this as a simple potentiometer to control the volume of the input. And that was really probably a clever thing to do, but they did a pretty messy job on it. And um, I'm happy to say that at this stage, I've got most of the functions working, but let me, let me go back a bit and just describe to you what this thing's supposed to do. This thing comes with a remote control. 
with a few functions. It's got a power bu uh, button on there, it's got a channel button, it's got a volume and a mute. Unfortunately, these functions do not do what you expect them to do, with the exception of this guy over here, maybe this one, because what it does is as follows. You switch it on. There's the power switch on the left there. The power comes on and the mute is immediately activated. And then what you do to get it to operate, to get rid of the mute function, is you push your power button. Once you push the power button, you think, right, let me select the input channel that I want. So you start selecting channel, but that doesn't do it. What the channel does is it actually controls a, a balance function, left to right channel. So you need to select your input with that knob over there. And there's quite a few options, as you can see here. You select your input. Once you've done that, you can then control, or you can then control the volume and it rotates that pot. But that pot is not rotating to change your volume level itself. It's changing the current that goes through the light dependent resistors, which at the moment you can't even see here. It's not those guys over there as one would initially think. It's two light dependent resistors that are under the board and there's a filament lamp in there that changes in intensity as you change the volume and that alters the volume going out of the preamp section or the control section into the preamp itself. So you control your volume and you then do have the mute function. You can actually press mute here. So I'm going to show you what happens uh, when I switch this on. Now we're going to have two pots rotating. One is that one over there when I rotate the volume and the other one is actually hidden under there and that's your balance pot and the effect is seen on this uh, meter above. So let's go through the motions. So if I power it on, this LED goes red that light goes on and this one starts blinking. That's your mute function as you see the uh, indication on the faceplate over there. So there's your mute function. Now the light dependent or rather the uh, infrared receiving diode or LED on this is actually in here somewhere. It's that guy over there I believe. So if I point this on here, I point this to there and I press mute, watch what happens. It comes out of mute. Okay, so theoretically I should be getting sound. I've got no inputs on here. This is just demonstration. But now if I change the volume, this is what happens. You see the pot move? So the remote function of volume control is working. The next thing that I can do is if I change, if I push the channel button, buttons, you'll see two things. You'll see this indicator move left and right. You'll also see that pot underneath rotate. Let's see if we can catch this. See that? You can't really see the rotation of the pot, but it's happening. There we go. And that's my balance control. At any time, I can also hit mute and that guy comes on again. So basically, we're looking at all the functions here and they seem to be operating, or at least the remote control seems to be operating. So that's how this remote works. And um, the problem was not really the remote. The problem was, well, actually, there were a lot of problems. Let me start at the beginning. This control board was a total mess especially on the inputs here because they had removed these two inputs to the volume control section. They would connected these two guys directly to the pot and they'd taken the output and put it back to where the output of the volume control section would follow on to the preamp. So they basically bypassed this whole thing and did it with, well, some pretty nasty looking pieces of cable and even worse looking pieces of soldering. Um, this is what was in there. 
So this thing looked like a total mess. And the report before I got it was that it was working partially. But let me tell you what was and wasn't working. The headphone out apparently was said to be working. So I tested that and found that it was working to a degree. We were getting one channel when I measured it on the scope at exactly or almost exactly double the level of the other channel. So one of the channels for the headphone amp was not working properly. And following that back and remembering some of the schematic from the previous uh, attempt or the previous video, I followed the signal all the way to the input of those Darlington transistors which drive the headphone function on this amp and found that they were exactly the same level and the outputs then were different. One of them was about half what the other one was. And the problem turned out to be one of these Darlingtons that had burnt out. So I replaced that one. And the result was we got our full equal outputs on the headphone, which is great. So I thought, okay, so now this goes to the line out. Wrong, it doesn't do that. This particular version takes the signal from the anode resistors of the tubes in rather a strange configuration. It's sort of three resistors sticking up there. And this thing does a balanced output instead of the single uh, outputs that you had on the previous one. And these two then go to these two MOSFETs, I believe they are, over there and over there. And that operates the muting function and so on and so forth. So this thing has a line output separate from the headphone out, which is not the case with the previous version. And I follow the signal all the way to these MOSFETs. And I found that these MOSFETs were being shorted to ground. In other words, the mute function was operating here, but that sort of left me a bit baffled because the mute function was working properly when I deactivated the mute in the front here. Um, if this mute had been activated, the headphones wouldn't work either. So it wasn't that mute function. So I went one step further and looked at the timer circuit over here. Now this timer circuit is a circuit that uh, switches on the output relays after a set time from switching on the amp. And the reason is you need to give the tube some time to heat up before you send signal to the output. These guys weren't coming on and I thought maybe it's the relays and I thought maybe it's that MOSFET because the MOSFET is in the timer circuit. So I went and checked voltages and that's when I found that we were getting strange voltages from these two regulators. These two are positive and negative uh, variable adjustable voltage regulators. They're supposed to give you minus 6.4 or 6.5 and plus 6.5. In fact, the resistor values they use give us 6.49, I believe it is. The negative one was working fine, and the positive one was giving me 8 point something. Now, I remember from the previous uh, repair, I had a similar problem, and it was one of the uh, regulators that wasn't making contact. Well, this one was slightly different. This one, the positive regulator, the LM317, was actually burned out, and it was shorting through. So I replaced that. And I got my two voltages back, which was easy enough to measure because the op amp over there, which is the DC server, uh, uses the positive and negative voltages. So I ended up with 6. Point, call it 6.4 and minus 6.4 coming out of there. And then lo and behold, I heard the relays clicking. And I also saw the result of the relays clicking by seeing this lamp, this LED, turn green which, as you will see if you look at the previous video, is a function of that relay timer circuit coming on. So I checked for output, and there it was. The outputs were on the outputs. So that was repaired as a consequence of repairing the uh, failed voltage regulator. So we got that one working. Then I had to come back and fix up the mess on the actual volume control. Now, as I said, the problem with this volume control is that, well, one of the problems is that there is no documentation. There's no schematic really out there for this part of the board, this main board. 
And so I had to figure out exactly what this thing was doing. And it, it's not too difficult. Well, it's not too difficult once you've done it, but this is my discovery so far. This section here, this is the uh, balance control. It, together with a lot of circuitry here, which includes the remote control function, which is a separate part of this board. The remote control function operates from here, but the balance control actually operates two light dependent resistors, which are these two black ones over here. I thought, well, I, th I think a lot of people thought this was actually what controlled the volume. It's not. This thing controls the balance. And I'll describe the circuit in a minute, you see how that works. Depending on which way that tone control is uh, turned, either that resistor in there, which is what it is, it's a light dependent resistor, that one there or that one there increases or decreases and they go in opposite directions. So if the left one increases, the bottom one decreases. And if the bottom one decreases, the left, the top one increases. And that's controlled by the amount of current going through the lamp section, which is on this side of those black tubes. So the way to control the uh, balance is to actually increase or reduce, increase and reduce uh, in opposite phase these two, this pair over here. So that's what that does. I also then try to figure out what part of these what these relays do and I found out that these relays basically do a mute function by shorting the two inputs to ground. So when you switch this thing on initially because the mute is on over there you can't really measure your signal coming in because it's shorted to ground. You th you'd think that you could test this thing in, 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 its, in, its, uh, in off but you can't because it's uh, by default it's set to ground. However unfortunately these relays are on IC sockets, so you can just take them out and you can then test this thing without power, which helps a lot. You Be careful, don't get this the wrong way around, because it will fit either way, but it's supposed to fit this way. So they're the relays that do the mute function. The mute that is controlled by your remote control, not the mute that's controlled by the timer circuit. Then, going a bit further, we find this, this circuit over here. There's a, a resistor in there, there's a variable capacitor, and there's a trimmer pot over there. And your signals, remember I had no wires on here, so I wasn't sure this is where it came in, but I figured that out. Your signal comes in here, goes through that trio of components, and then it goes to a section here which was basically clear. So, and it looked like there were components on the underside. When you lift the underside, you see this thing's got a lamp in there on the underside of the board. And those two pairs there are light dependent resistors that are stuck on the underside of the board with a lamp on top of it with a light diffuser. And that is your volume control. Those two LDRs are shorted, they are shunted to ground um, which basically means that when you get them to zero resistance or low resistance, you can't really get zero, um, this signal, which is on this pin over there, gets shorted to ground, which means that into your preamp, you're getting a very, very low version of your signal, if not a shorted input. If you make that resistor, call it infinite, then the entire audio signal goes through to your preamp. So that's how, by altering this resistance to ground, this shunt resistor, you are altering the level of your volume. It wasn't working, obviously, because it had been taken out of the circuit completely. So I had to have a look at that. And of course, the function of the pot, which is now in here, as you can see, I had to more or less guess from one picture that I found on the web, I found that the, this pot was actually it's a 20k stereo and I found that these were all shorted together. So this was basically halved. This becomes a 10 kilo ohm pot. And these three wires going down to there, logically, depending on whether you're looking at the top side or the underside, fit with pins, well, you know, one, two, three or one, two, three. I tried the other way, it didn't work. I tried this way and it seems to work now. 
So this thing has been wired back in place. And this thing is what makes this whole volume control function properly. But there is a lot more to it than meets the eye because underneath there, actually there, let's see if I can show this, these two little trimmers are also part, part of this circuit over here. And that is shorted to ground. So I had to remove this and try and draw a schematic to try and figure out what the hell was going on. And I did that and I think that's what I'll describe next. So having gone through that whole description, I still haven't told you what was wrong with this volume control. And uh, this is what happens when you go back and look at your video. So this is an insert. Now, as I said, I removed all these components to get the schematic to figure out how it worked. And after doing that, it was fairly simple to realize that I had a permanent short to ground on one of these and a permanently open one on one of those. So one channel was permanently shorted to ground, the other channel was completely open. And um, to figure out what, what had happened, I removed the bottom of the, uh, I removed the, the light, the bottom, that uh, incandescent lamp. And when I removed that, I realized one of the LEDs had gone, one of the, not the LEDs, one of the light dependent resistors wasn't even there. It had literally been broken and ripped out. Don't know how, but it wasn't there. And the other one was failing. So I had a problem. I had to find uh, alternatives to replace in here. And it wasn't as difficult as it sounds, uh, because what I needed was a resistor that went from as close to zero ohms as possible. Obviously, it won't go down all the way to zero when it's fully lit, to a high value, call it one meg or so, when it is, uh, when it is dark. And... Um, I went through various LDRs to try and find two that actually matched. And the way I matched them was with a, with a light source, measuring the resistance across the uh, element with the same light falling on it. When I found two that matched as closely as possible, I put those in there. And surprisingly enough, the match was pretty good. So the whole story that these, whole, these boards are being... Uh, ripped out because you can't get components anymore is actually crap because you can you just try you probably have to try quite a few LDRs in there but this is not these ones here are not the same as those those are actually optocouplers this is simply a light dependent resistor with a incandescent lamp that shines on it so it's no big deal to try and replace that and uh, having done that obviously it seems simple now but it might feel a bit daunting at first, but you can get it done. And that's what happened. At this stage, this thing is working with a, fairly well with a, um, with a signal from a signal generator and then just checking the results on the scope over there. I haven't actually put music through this. I don't know what it sounds like. My ears are not as golden as that, those of this friend of mine who's a fanatic for audio, so he has to basically listen to it and see whether he agrees that uh, we have a fix or not. But there's a lot more interesting stuff on the circuit, and I wanted to show some of this because anybody wanting to repair one of these as opposed to, you know, rip the front board out really does need some help. There is very, very little information on the web. So hopefully this short description will help you if you uh, are trying to repair your Mellos Gold. So what I've set up here is I've set up the signal generator with a one kilohertz tone. It's at about 100, it is at 100 millivolts RMS output. That's going into the CD in at the back there. So now if I switch that on, I've got my um, red light here. That means the timer circuit is still warming up for the tubes. I have my mute function on there. Okay. When that timer circuit switches on and activates the outputs, in other words, the output relays get turned on, that thing turns green. Now it takes quite a while, probably longer than the tubes need to heat up. But um, 
you can actually change the time of that by reducing that capacitor the back here that one there which i did on the other one to probably around half a minute this thing's taking probably double that but anyway we'll fast forward it and uh, wait for that thing to come on in the meantime i'm going to put the scope onto the output pins of the uh, or the output uh, rcas so we can follow that on the scope right so that's turned green it means that the output relays have activated the scope probes are on the left and right outputs of that um, of the of the preamp i've got that going to the two traces on the scope the signal coming in is coming into the cd input which uh, is over there at the moment nothing's happening because the mute is on if i hit the mute button while pointing it at that that's activated the uh, or deactivated the mute so we should get something now let's look at the scope so there we got it what you're seeing here are the two outputs overlapping I'll just shift that one so you can get a better view and um, it's on maximum volume at the moment so if I reduce the volume by pressing that guy the volume goes down and goes up whoop de doo but that's a boring way to activate the volume put this thing aside I can actually move it manually but there's a better way with this uh, setup and that is watch this now what I'm doing here I'll show you see that what the hell am I doing well what I'm doing is actually reducing the amount of light that's getting to those uh, LDRs now the lights have gone out and it's on purpose because I want to show you what happens when you put the volume down I'm um, zoomed in on that section of the board where the LDRs are and as I said to you there's a, a lamp below it now I've got the volume on, max, the, on maximum, which means that uh, there would be uh, very little light on there because you want the resistance to be high. And watch what happens to that section of the board when I drop the volume, when I reduce the volume, and I'm reducing it manually now. You see that? You see that? You see that? There we go. Maximum brightness means minimum resistance, which means minimum volume. That's quite a cool effect. You can actually see the light shining through the board. That's the light that's hitting the LDRs and reducing their value. Okay, enough lighting effects for now. So what are you trying to do when your signal comes in from the selector? You've got the selector done, you've selected your input source, and you now want to control the level going into your circuitry you usually use something like a potentiometer, right? One side normally to ground, here's your in, there's your out. Okay, now what this is really, it's a potential divider where depending on where your wiper is, you're getting more or less of the input voltage coming out. Your wiper basically makes this two resistors call this R1, call this R2. And then your output, if you call that V in and V out, your V out is equal to R1 over R1 plus R2 times V in. Very simple. When your R1 is zero, so your wiper is completely down to the left, your V out is zero. When your wiper is at the top, so your R1, R2 is equal to zero, you've got R1 over R1, you've got V in, so your V out becomes equal to V in. That's your potential divider. What you do with a uh, LDR circuit like this one, 
is you basically draw it slightly differently. You basically draw this. There's your R2. There's your V out. That's your V in. And then you put your R1 here. You can call this R2 the series resistor and R1 the shunt resistor. What you've got here is a fixed potential divider if you use fixed resistors. So your V out is always R1 divided by some of the two times V in. However, if you are able to change one or both of these resistors, you're basically creating a system where you can use this as a potentiometer. Okay? And what they've done here, there are various ways of doing this. You can actually have uh, the shunt resistor changing with the series resistor fixed. Okay, you can have the shunt resistor fixed with the series resistor changing, or you can have these two changing simultaneously but in opposite directions. This one goes high as this one goes low, this one goes high, that one goes low. That is something that uh, was very cleverly done by um, actually, if you look on, on, on the web for light speed attenuator guy called George who's doing this out of Australia. He's been doing this for 35 years or more. Um, believe me, you, you, you need a lot of time and patience to read through the entire forum uh, item on this because it's about 580 pages or something like that now. I haven't read it all. I don't have that much time. But it's very interesting. What he does is he uses two light dependent resistors, the series one and the shunt one, and he reverse connects the current limit to these, uh, to the lights that activate these resistors, so that when that one goes high, that one goes low. When that one goes high, that one goes low. And therefore, he tries to keep this the series combination, the sum of these two, basically the same, so that your source is seeing a fairly constant um, load resistance. But he's changing the the proportion between these two, so you get a controllable output voltage. Very interesting uh, little project. He's got all the circuits there and all the ideas there. You can DIY it yourself. Um, and it's created quite a, a stir because all sorts of different uh, ideas have come up. But very interesting if you've got a lot of time to read it. So what he has done in that case is he's made both of these light dependent resistors. What Melos did on this particular preamp is he made this a fixed resistor and he made this guy an LDR, a light dependent resistor. And the way the light dependent resistor works is you change the level or the amount of light falling on that resistor. And as a result, the resistance goes high if there's little light, low if there's a lot of light. They've got the resistor and they've got the light bulb, literally a, a tubular, like a fused light bulb underneath. That sort of comes up and the resistance changes. When you have the most light, this particular resistor here goes very low. And therefore, it's like having this wiper of the pot down at the bottom. So your volume is very low. When you switch it off and you make this whole thing black, this resistance can go very, very high into the mega ohm range which means it's almost like it's not there and your output is the same as your input, so your volume goes up. And that's what happens in this theory circuit. Okay, What they've done here is slightly more complex, which is where probably the problem started. The idea of this is that if you use this system, you don't have any moving parts. The big argument is that this wiper on a pot, on a potentiometer, is not actually very tightly bound to the resistive element that it's made up of. So it can bounce and it can actually create, because of noise, because of dirt or, or even uh, low pressure on that, on that contact, it can actually create a distortion of the sound going through. If you can change these resistors without having any moving parts like that, you could end up with a sound going straight through as purely as possible. And that's the whole objective of this, this idea. So in this case, they've actually used a series resistor, but that's soldered in place. There's no moving parts, okay? It's soldered in place. 
and then it goes through this part which is alter alternating or changing to give you a level. The control of this is a light bulb. This light bulb is controlled by some sort of pot. In other words, this pot that you see here, very badly drawn, is a current limit for this light bulb, which is badly drawn, but it has nothing to do with the signal path. It's completely outside of the signal path. All you need here is a power supply, you know, a potentiometer, some sort of control circuitry to control the current going through here, the light bulb ground. If anything, these grounds are connected. They don't even have to be because this is a light bulb completely opto isolated from the resistor, which is great. Now let's look at what they did. The problem being this thing is not very linear and you're trying to control the volume of two sides, the stereo channels left and right. When you start doing that with two of these guys, you have to find two of them that are exactly the same. So that when you adjust the light on here, the levels, the resistance that this produces must be exactly the same for the left channel as it is for the right channel so that you get channel balance. It's very difficult to match these uh, LDRs exactly. And that's where they've added a lot of circuitry. Let me show you what they've done. So what they have here is they've got your, they've got the input voltage and I'm drawing one channel. So they've got V in. They have got a fixed resistor, which is 100K, a very high quality Caddock resistor. Okay, that's your fixed, that's your series resistor. Then they've got the LDR to ground. I think that's how you draw it. That goes to ground. That's your LDR. Okay. That's your volume control, effectively. And then that is your out. Okay. Really, that's what you should have. That should be all you had. However, you're trying to match this particular one to exactly the same thing on the other side. That's where the problems start, okay? So, what they decided to do is, if this thing is not exactly matched to the other side, they may have to adjust the resistance of the series circuit and the resistance of the, power of the shunt circuit to match the two. So, what they've gone and done is they've put a trimmer pot over here. This is a trimmer. This is about one meg trimmer. So the idea is that they need to drop this slightly to match this thing at what would it be at the maximum volume I think it would be. Not sure maximum maximum volume yeah. At the maximum volume they need to match the two channels they would adjust that trimmer on one side or the other. Ultimately you'd need to adjust it on the stronger side so that your signal outputs would match left and right, okay? Then they probably found, okay, well, wait a minute, what if it's the other way? What if the minimum volume is not adjustable? Or what if at the maximum volume I need to adjust the shunt element? Damn, you know, we, we probably need to put a, um, a trimmer to ground here as well. So somebody had the idea, okay, they need to put this thing to ground. So they take this particular point here and they've gone and made it and they've put another trimmer to ground. This is also one meg. So they can adjust the parallel element and the vertical and the uh, series element. So they can adjust the actual level before and after that and then it's become so complicated and it's not finished yet because they probably got, because these are high impedance elements, you've got, you know, one meg there, 100k, they, they probably got some sort of RF interference going on here. So they decided, wait a minute, we need to cut that down. So they decided to put in a trimmer cap. Yep, I know, it's weird. They put a trimmer cap in here in parallel with that element there. So the whole idea of reducing moving parts and probably unsoldered joints, because theoretically a soldered resistor is fairly stable, they've gone and created a parallel element with a unsoldered joint, which is the wiper, 
a shunt element with an unsoldered joint, which is the wiper, and also that trimmer cap on there just to reduce whatever it was. I think probably RF reception at the front end or something like that. Okay, so they've gone and messed some of that up. Theoretically, they've created the possibility of adjusting for the two, um, the imbalances on the, on the LDRs. Great. What if you can't? What if at lower volumes you can, but then at higher volumes your left channel is you know, stronger than your right channel? What do you do then? So somebody thought, okay, let's create a balance control. Hey, dude, we can even put a nice little meter on the front and, and these audiophiles will love it. So, yeah, they do that. And how do they do that? Well, that's the two black tubes you see on the top. They've created another LDR circuit. And this thing is also going to the other channel. Okay. So if that channel is too strong compared to that one, what we'll do is we'll, you know, we'll drop this resistance a bit. We'll short it to ground a bit. So here you can have your balance control. If this one's too strong, you, you, you reduce this resistance, leave that one high. If that one is too strong, you reduce this resistance, leave that one high. And the balance works. And hey, dudes, we, we, you know, we've got ourselves a nice little meter over here. You know, we can make this thing go left and right and everybody loves it. And it works, but it's gone and mess it, messed up the purity of that whole signal again. Not to mention the fact that when this thing then goes into the preamp itself, it goes through a capacitor, a resistor, it goes through a MOSFET, which has the, 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 the um, muting circuit on here. I believe the MOSFET works like a, you know, sort of a muting circuit to ground. So you can mute it like that. This thing is so dirtied up from the original concept of keeping no moving parts and as few components as possible in the circuit path that it became a mess. And, and this is probably why a lot of people have gone and ripped this whole board out. Now, Quite honestly, I, I still don't know what this thing's going to sound like. Um, I'm not that discerning in terms of audio quality that I can probably tell the difference between, you know, an LDR uh, working by itself and perhaps working with another one as the balance control. I'm quite curious to hear what it sounds like and hear what other people think it sounds like. But anyway, the point is, this is basically what that input circuit is. There has been, so far that I can tell, there's been no explanation, no drawings, no schematics, very few photographs of this input circuit. And I just wanted to clarify a little bit for anybody interested in uh, tackling this themselves. Uh, don't throw it away. They're fantastic pieces of equipment, very well built generically. The boards are a nightmare. Um, this one is a lot more carefully uh, built than the previous one, but it's still a bit of a nightmare with a mishmash of components. Not all of them audio grade. But this is a classic, so I hope, I hope this has been useful and uh, informative and it proves useful to anybody else wanting to handle one of these. I am going to finish this up for now and enjoy the music. And thanks for watching. Bye for now.